Good evening everybody. Sorry it's a late one again this evening. I've had so much to do today. This is also going to be a short one for that reason. I'm absolutely shattered that I could not come live. I am sticking to this. I've had so many messages from people to say that my lives are helping them, whether it's themselves who have lost children or family members or friends, even people who are working with people. Um, so for instance, people who may work in a hospital, people who are training to become midwives. Like I've just heard from so many different people. So no matter how tired I am, I'm going to do this. So today's the 13th, it's day five. I can't believe it, it's gone so fast. And as you can see from the title, this evening I'm going to be discussing with you Dancing for Destiny. So if you've known me for some time or you've been on my page for some time, you will see Dancing for Destiny in the left hand column. Hi Tanya. Um, and myself and my husband are fundraisers for Dancing for Destiny. Dancing for Destiny is something that we created back in 2017 it was 2017 wasn't it i think it was late 2017 uh we created dancing for destiny to basically help other parents and if you know me again you'll know that i am a dancer i love to dance i've danced for so long but the bible in psalms 30 also talks about turning your mourning into dancing so for me it was just perfect it just fit together so nicely it's like right you know i i've i've had my time to grieve now i want to get out there and help and i'm going to show everyone that is going through this that one day even though you might not know it right now, but your morning will be turned into dancing. One day you'll be rejoicing. You might not feel like it when you're going through it because it really doesn't. It feels like the end of the world. Um, but I can testify to the fact that you will get there. One day you'll be like, wow, come on, let's do this. Let's go out and help other people in whatever way that you know you see fit to. So what we chose to do was marry the two together and... Um, basically just have people coming together and having a good time in destiny's name that was the initial idea because the very first one that we ran was actually in 2017 it was very local it was in a little community center not far from where we used to live and um i'm just trying to think now it seems so long ago hobby was the dj we had music we had dance workshops we had a like a little tuck bar people could like buy things but everything that was being sold on the day the money was going towards destiny's headstone so the very 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 first dancing for destiny was like a personal thing and as well as doing that to bring awareness and help other people, the community were also helping us because it was a fundraiser to raise money for Destiny's Headstone. So before we even got to the fundraiser, we had a GoFundMe page set up. We still do. And what happened was family and friends, because we had it on here, were putting in donations. Can't thank you enough. You've all been so generous. But then we're doing Dancing for Destiny, we were able to get like just over halfway. So after that, we continued to fundraise. But then I had a period of time and I've been on here, I've posted about it, but I haven't actually spoke about it in depth. I had a period of time where I don't know if it's but I felt low, but I just felt like I wasn't in the right space to continue fundraising. So we took a long, long break and I said to my husband, I just want to put it on hold for a minute. I just need to continue helping others and then we'll come back to the headstone. So then out of that, Dancing for Destiny grew and it became a bigger fundraising uh, event. The very last one we did, which was last year, 2019, absolutely amazing. If you were there, you'd know it was our biggest one yet. The room was packed. We had our stalls because we get store holders to come as well. We had dance schools there for entertainment. It was absolutely amazing. We had an amazing raffle. Oh my gosh, the raffle. That's probably the best raffle ever that we've ever done. It was amazing. One of the prizes was um, light up LED trainers. I mean, like we had an amazing time. It was so, so good. So that's what we do every year. 
and the dance schools they jump on board we tell them our story so they have a background as to who destiny was and why it's called dancing for destiny they get involved and then what they do they perform so they are like the entertainment so everybody that's there is getting entertainment they're getting to shop because we have storeholders so we'll have people selling body shop we'll have people selling um party like people selling fm people selling um forever living like all different things and also their own things that they might make at home as well or secondhand stuff doesn't matter as long as they're not duplicate stalls we'll have you and we only charge about five pounds and because i said about the whole putting destiny's headstone on the back burner for a while these events are actually set up to help raise money for sands now remember i explained sands last night the sands charity it's basically an acronym for stillbirth and neonatal death okay um hello viewers i can't exactly see exactly who you are i can see you're coming up so just say hi when you do and they helped us immensely when we lost Destiny. And they helped many, many grieving families all up and down the, the country. So we fundraise for them. Sands UK, we, we fundraise for. And we're enjoying it. And the very last one that we did, we raised over, was it over £500? Over £500. Sands sent us a lovely thank you card to say thank you. They sent us a handwritten letter. We've got a certificate to say that we raised money for them in memory of our daughter. We'll always treasure that. Absolutely amazing. So it was helping me to not think about our situation for a while and just go on to continue to help other people. And it's like, wow. So we've really only just got back on to, I wouldn't really say fundraising as such for Destiny's Headstone, but we have recently got back into, you know, getting onto it and saying, right, we're going to get it done. I think within myself, I feel more complete now. I feel more stronger, but I just needed a break. No matter how strong you are, it was getting very overwhelming for me and what you need to remember is a headstone is final so once it's down it's like kind of like oh what else what else can we do for her that's probably like the last thing that we can do it's very final and I think part of me just didn't want to rush that you know it could be a lot of things a lot of things psychologically like the brain is a very amazing tool so yes I wanted to just relax for a bit and go on to help others but if you're watching and you have made a donation for Destiny's Headstone. I thank you so much. And I stand by what I say. When it's down, when this whole COVID thing blows over, I would like to invite each and every one of you. Maybe not at the same time, but I would love to invite. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do it, actually. I might actually do it in, I don't know, have a little party or something. But if anybody actually wanted to go and view it, then they'd be more than welcome because we wouldn't have been able to do it without you. But when we get closer to that time, I'll let you know exactly what we've decided to do. So in the future, we hope for Dancing for Destiny to keep growing and growing and growing. We do have a page on here. So as I said, you'll see on the left-hand side of my profile page all the different you know, things that I do. Dancing for Destiny is there. Click on it. Have a look. Have a look at the pictures. I think there's a few videos on there as well um, from our very last Dancing for Destiny. And there might even be some there from the one before. Is it two or three that we've done now? So we did 2017. We did 20. Oh, 2018 was quite a small one. I remember now, that one wasn't as successful. Do you remember? We had an event and on that day, unbeknown to us, in the area that we were in, hey, Tasha, there was absolutely loads of events going on on that day so that one wasn't as successful still a great event but last year was amazing honestly it was amazing if we can hit that level all the time i'd be happy absolutely amazing last year so that is what we are aiming for but yes we're just praying for it to just continue to grow because you touch people when you do things like that the amount of people that came just to hear our story and you know we have the food serving in the tuck shop to help us raise money for sands but people were so touched by what we'd gone through and that we were there not focusing on ourselves but wanted to then raise money for you know the charity sands they were literally just opening their purses and donating to Sands, and that's why we were able to get over 500 pounds for them because 
you know, people are touched by hearing something that is so real. And if you look at it like that, then you question, so why is it such a taboo? This is the question. This is the question. And I was talking about it with my husband earlier. And we were saying, because we were listening to a, a live feed, it's actually on my page. If you scroll down, I think it's two posts underneath this one. There was a live feed on today about miscarriage and stillbirth and neonatal deaths. And one of the ladies was basically saying that it's not talked about enough. It needs to be talked about more. If you feel that you're hearing people talk about it all the time, one, obviously this week is the week that we talk about it a lot because it's Baby Loss Awareness Week. But even if it's not Baby Loss Awareness Week and you feel like you're maybe hearing it a lot or you've got somebody on your profile who have lost a child and they're always posting things about it, it's because that's basically our only, our only outlet. Like friends, family, the lady was saying that we don't really engage in that kind of conversation with them and it's so, so true. What the exact words were, when her child died, I'm going to say child, because I can't remember if it was a, a little girl or a little boy, but when her baby passed, she said that her dad wrote her beautiful poems um, after the death leading up to the funeral. And then she said, once she buried her precious baby, he didn't give her any more poems after that. After that, it was never even spoke about, like he never mentioned it again. And I felt that I understood exactly what she meant. Because I felt, even though Destiny's funeral was very, very small, because that's exactly how I wanted it, I was in such a state, I would have not have been able to, to cope with anything large. Um, I just wanted to go, put her to rest, and, and, and go back home. But I just think to myself, I get you, I hear you, I, I understood everything she said, because once you do bury your child, in our case, it was practically the same thing, like, very few people would say, oh, you know, do you still think about Destiny, or how are you feeling once you've buried, you know, your daughter, or, it's a strange one, and some people get very angry about it, but I never have done, because the way you have to look at it is, there's two sides, we don't mind you speaking about our precious babies, and I think I can speak on behalf of a lot of people, I mean, a lot of support groups for this now, and we all say the same thing. You're not hurting us. We love it when you mention them because it just shows that you remember them and that you haven't forgot them. Hence my group, Forget Me Not Babies. But um, the other side of that is the people who are not mentioning them, even if they are family or friends, you've got to see it from their point of view. Unless you engage in a conversation, they don't know whether you have... I'm not going to say got over losing your baby because you never get over a loss like that. You just don't. You move forward, but you don't get over. Um, it's always going to be very raw. As my husband said last night, you never expect to bury your child. You expect it to be the other way around, then burying you. Um, so, yeah, you have to see it from their point of view. They're thinking, can I mention them? Or I better not mention their baby because I might upset them. And I completely hear that. I have to take myself back to before I became a bereaved parent. And when I, I don't think I was around many people, but a few people who had lost babies, did I engage in conversation with them directly about their, ch their, their child or their children? I don't think I did because it's such a sensitive subject. But sensitivity should be different to taboo. There should still be these safe places where they know, the parents know that they can speak. It's okay to speak about your children even though they're not here, even though they're not present with us, rather than feeling that, oh, if I mention them, I might upset this person. I might lower the tone. That, that's, that's really sad. I've spoken to so many parents that feel that way. And if you're watching this and that's you, please stop. Talk about your precious babies because at the end of the day, you should be able to. You can't think about how it may affect other people because at the end of the day, and as, as, as harsh as it might sound, that is not your problem. Your problem is to look after your mental health and to stay well and to, to move forward after this horrific thing has happened to you, you can't do that and also think about, 
am I going to upset this person if I mention them? Like, your living children get mentioned and people don't mind that. Why should it be such a taboo if you mention your child that is no longer here? So this is what we need to stop and this is why I'm speaking out. Encourage it. If you have a friend that you know has lost their precious baby, maybe just mention something next time you're with them and say, look, you know, something as simple as if you ever want to speak about and actually mention their name because it means so much to us. If you ever want to speak about whatever that baby's name is, I'm here. You can speak to me. Something as simple as that, trust me, will go a long way. I never forget Christmas 2017. It was hard because I sat there and I painted on a smile for Malaika and Jackson. But at the same time, I was in bits inside because I'm thinking... I'm so blessed to sit here and look at my two children, have fun and be together and play and just enjoy Christmas Day. But I knew that in my head, I still had visions of the three of them having fun on Christmas Day, even though Destiny wouldn't have been, um, you know, that that old. But um, at the time, it, it tears you apart. It really, really, really does. So what you need to do is just, just be mindful, be mindful of that. Because the minute a lady finds out she's pregnant, she's happy, she's planning, she's excited, you know, in, in most cases. Um, so yeah, 2017, I remember my one of my sisters bringing, well, she brought the gifts for Malika and Jackson, but she also had things to go on the tree for Destiny. And they were first Christmas things to go on the tree. And I'm telling you, things like that, you never forget. That really touched me because it just showed me that she wasn't forgotten. Um, and that, you know, she was still thought of as being a part of the family. And it's just nice. Everybody is different. Everybody is different. So if you're not sure and you think, but if I say something, I might be saying the wrong thing. The best thing to do is have a conversation with that person, whether it's your friend, whether it's, you know, your family member and say, you know, where are you right now? Are you at the stage where would I, would I upset you if I mentioned, you know, baby? Or would you rather that I wouldn't? Because everybody is different. Everybody is different. Some people might say, do you know what? I'm not quite there yet. It's too soon. I would rather that you don't mention them. Um, I still want to hold them very close to me. I don't really want to share anything with anybody else just yet. And I get that because with grief as well, you go through stages. Um, but just ask. I think the safest thing to do is to ask the question. Because as I said, I've spoken to so many bereaved parents. And that's the one thing that keeps coming up. They say a lot of the time, it's like they're forgotten about once they're buried. The initial family will keep their memory alive and speak about them. But it's almost like nobody else will mention them. They just see the children that you have now. And that can be upsetting. So just be mindful of that. But please, please, please remember to go and check out Dancing for Destiny. See how you can get involved. Because we are thinking about getting some volunteers on board for future events. Obviously, due to the COVID, they won't be happening right now. But do still drop us a message if you're interested in getting, you know, getting on board with us and seeing how you can help other parents and other families. We'd be happy, happy, happy to have you. And if you've had no experience or no training at all, we'd be happy to train you up. No problem at all. Right. I'm going to leave you because I'm so, so tired. Tomorrow, I'll let you know what's going to happen. Tomorrow will be day six. And tomorrow, you're going to see me with my little rainbow. And I will explain in tomorrow's live exactly what a rainbow baby is and what the term is used for. So thank you so much for joining me. If you're watching on the replay, don't forget to hashtag a replay. Let me know what you think. Any questions, please keep sending them to my inbox. I'm loving reading them all. Please keep sharing because these lives are helping so many people. Thank you so much. God bless. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.